the preview review strategy. So today I'm going to teach you this strategy that is called preview review that I've been using in my class for the last several years. And it has really helped my students to unpack difficult readings. You can also use it with any kind of chart or um, graph or even image. Really, the possibilities are endless. You're going to love this. So let's bring unit five, day 17 on the board, for instance. And now let's move towards page number seven, where you can find the teacher support for multilingual students. Our first suggestion in here is to use a variety of diverse and engaging texts. Example, articles, videos, or images that feature the big idea and rich content for multilingual learners. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on article and see what happens. And we open the article and we realize a BuzzFeed news article and it's perfect because it's, um, it's rich print and it has a fantastic title, interesting, um, and also has a picture. And also we scroll down and we realize this is very daunting for multilingual learners, right? So we're going to use the preview review technique or strategy to help our multilingual learners to unpack this article. At the same time, we're gonna generate an expectation for them. And we're also going to activate the prior knowledge that our students already have, okay? So let's start. First, let me give you an overview about the preview review strategy. This is a strategy, I love it. It's a strategy that I learned uh, while I was taking my TESO class at City College and I've used it with my students ever since. The instructional goal of um, preview review is uh, basically to support students in comprehending text that is complex like this one that we're gonna see now. And it's by teaching them to preview what they are about to read and review what they already know about the subject. It is very important to say that for the strategy to be well implemented, it has to begin with the teacher modeling. So I'm going to model it for you, just like to give you an idea on how to do it with your students. But it is really important to model the strategy for your students before you use it, especially for the first time. Right. So this is going to be like um, you're going to be modeling through our read aloud, think aloud. Um, students then are going to practice the strategy in pairs or small groups um, with scaffolds. And those scaffolds are going to be sentence stems that you're going to see in a moment. And then the students are going to practice on their own. And, um, and then the students are going to uh, reflect on what they did. The metacognition part is very important at the end of the day. So the students can reflect on what they did, um, how to improve it for the next time, and basically what went well and what didn't. Let's start with the modeling part, just like making sure that my uh, thinking is feasible for my students. So the first thing that I will say to my students is, okay, so I'm looking at this picture and I realize that it's coming from a science um, article and that it is about the Olympics. Um, so I see, and students can start with something very simple, like I see three women running, okay? I noticed from the title that these are women athletes. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what BART means, but I think it may mean that they, were, they didn't qualify for something. I also see these women are strong. They have a lot of muscles. They're very athletic. Um, some of them are taller and some of them are thinner. Some of them are bigger, but they are um, the three of them are very athletic. Now I can start making inferences. I already know what female means because we just studied in class. And I'm wondering why these women are not female enough. This word gender, I know that it means either male or female and I'm wondering by looking at the article by looking at the headline and the image if the article is going to be about these women not being real women now I'm curious to know why this reminds me to the last class we had in living environment when we talked about the controversy of uh, having too much testosterone 
And of course, you're going to have a variety of answers in here. You're going to have kids that are going to dig very deep into the context and the uh, picture and the headline and kids that are going to be more superficial or maybe um, their English is not strong enough. So feel free to use um, the language of the student if you can. Allow dictionary, um, set the instructional goal in home language if you can as well. Uh, group of students with another person that can help them in their home language and translate uh, sentence stems every time you can. While you're modeling, um, just like a stress for the students to understand that you want them to look at the type of newspaper you're bringing, the type of article as well, the headline, also what it says just below the headline and uh, pay attention to the image and uh, to the caption and just like try to get as much information from the article as they can just before they start reading. Now it comes the next step, which is the partner small group discussion with scaffolds. Using sentence stems, give the students an image or a chart or a text. It can be the same one they just model and allow the kids to talk about it orally or you can ask them to write on a whiteboard. I know in the digital world that we live right now, it's a little bit more complicated, but you can still just like use programs such as uh, Jamboard or Kami, which is an extension of Google um, Chrome. Or you can just simply use the breakout rooms in the uh, Zoom session or different links for Google Meet or even the whiteboard that is um, that comes with Zoom or with any other uh, whiteboard that you can find online. Notice that the preview stems and the review stems are different because really preview is just like for the students to describe what they see. So everybody can say something about the picture and everybody can say something about the headlines. So it's just like describe what you see. Review, on the contrary, allows the students to make connections. The next step after modeling and working on pairs, it will be for the students to practice on their own. And finally, engage your students on a metacognition activity in which they reflect about the process. You can also um, create some stems for the students. Uh, you can also say, for instance, when doing this activity, I should look for when I'm reviewing um, a text, I have to pay attention to when activating my prior knowledge, I should, or one question that I still have about what we did today is, um, allow your students to really reflect on what they did and how to improve it for the next time. And um, that was the end of the video for today.